It's a pleasure to be here today and to talk to you a little bit about what I do for a living. Um, I am a mom who blogs. And I am also a mom who blogs without a clicker. So <laughs> it's just this red button. Okay. The right. Okay. All right. And I'm here to explain to you why the people that I work with online are important and why they're important to your business. So who are mom bloggers? What I'm showing here is an image of people in my network and people who I work with regularly. Um, they span a multitude of ethnic backgrounds and educational backgrounds. They come from all over the US. But there are three important characteristics that unite all of us. The first is that we have a desire to be heard. We want to tell our story and we want people to listen. We want to engage others around our message. We want to connect. It's a fundamental human emotion to want to find someone else who's having that same life experience that you are and who recognizes and says, hey, staying up with your kid all last night, that was OK. I've been there. I've had a hard day, too. And finally, what you might not be seeing on this slide is that mom bloggers didn't start out blogging. Mostly, they are women with professional backgrounds. They are lawyers. They are teachers. They were consultants long before they stepped away from the workforce. These are women with business skills and with a need to utilize them. So why do these women matter to you as a business person? Well, from a sheer numbers perspective, they matter. There are 79 million women in the US who are online today. And of those women, 53% participate in social media two to three times a week. And when I say social media, they're on Facebook, they're on Twitter, they're blogging. Again, they're telling their story. They're participating in a host of different uh, networks. And they're online all the time. We get up in the morning, we check email. But these women, they check their Facebook account. They posted about, you know, gosh, um, my baby didn't eat this morning. And what's going on with this formula? What's happening with um, my kid and their art project? Of the women who are blogging, they're also talking about your product and your brand. A moment ago, I talked about formula. If, if something works for a woman, you will know. She will tell you. If something doesn't work, you will know. She will tell you. What's important to keep in mind is that these women are talking about your brand. They're having real-time conversations. And you need to know what they're saying. The purchasing, the purchasing power of women is also incredibly significant. Um, Currently, I think women are estimated to be responsible for $2.1 trillion of US consumer spending. What's more, they are influencing household purchasing. Um, not, and not only consumer goods in terms of your toilet paper or your paper towels. They're influencing what kind of car their family is driving, what kind of appliance they're using, um, what kind of laptop is their family buying. Um, they have an incredible, um, an inc incredible purchasing power. And more than that, we're going over the concept of having a branded conversation. They're recommending products to one another. They're doing this on the playground. They're doing this online. They're doing this in their mommy and me group. They're talking about what works, be it a baby carrier or a stroller. And when we hear that message as women, when we get that kind of recommendation, we are exponentially more likely to go out and buy that product than we would compared to if we were just to watch an advertisement online or, on the, or in a magazine or you know, on television. So my message to you today is to consider mom bloggers for your marketing program. Your product plus the power of a mom blogger is a viable marketing channel for you in addition to what you're doing in media and maybe on television or on the radio. It's a place, it's a space that you want to be a part of. One thing that I neglected to say as 
before I started this presentation is that I really want this to be a conversation. If you have questions, please stop me. This is what I do for a living. I have conversations. So I really want my presentation to be a reflection of that. Why should you hire a mom blogger? In my opinion, there are some key points. First of all, hiring a mom blogger gives your brand a real voice. It's not a faceless employee of yours who is tweeting from behind a brand image. This is a woman who is having an experience, who is telling her story. Um, and she's doing it in real time. It's not something that, wow, you're having a sale and you suddenly want me to know about it. Um, a woman will get online and she will say, I went to Ikea today and I saved X number of dollars and this is what I bought. Um, and here's a picture of it. And here I am on YouTube interacting with the product. And here I am on my blog writing about it. What's more, it inspires consumer trust. Um, again, getting back to that idea of if I hear about um, a product that maybe a friend of mine or even an online acquaintance is recommending, I'm much more likely to go out and buy that product. Hiring a mom blogger allows you to convey your brand message to an interactive audience. You've heard about the idea of placing personality over page views. You may not be working with Reed Drummond of Pioneer Woman or even Deuce, but you are working with women who have a captive audience, who are listening to what they have to say. And it goes beyond just their friends and family. It goes beyond people that they may know within their personal circle. It's, it's that um, kind of that exponential effect that Justin spoke about a moment ago. And finally, working with mom bloggers promotes a feedback about your product in real time. There are a number of ways that you can utilize mom bloggers to promote your brand. And I'm going to go through a, a fair number of them today. And this will actually be kind of the, the focal point of my pro, um, presentation. You can hire a mom blogger to write a sponsored post for you. There are guidelines, regulatory guidelines around this now. You are not paying for a positive review. You are paying for a real review. You are paying for someone to write their opinion about your product. But you can partner with women and you can have them convey their experience, maybe even utilizing some of your brand messaging within that post, and still make it authentic. And that's really the power of moms within social media, is this idea of an authentic connection. You can also use moms to host what's known as Twitter parties. Essentially, these are an hour that people will dedicate online to come together and have a live chat about your brand. Um, in the community that Megan talked about um, a moment ago that I run, we'll schedule time, say 7 p.m. Eastern Standard Time because, you know, we're trying to cover all the t time zones. And we'll work with a company like Crayola. Um, and while we may not be talking about Crayola's back-to-school products specifically, we're talking about art or we're talking about how to create time in your day to spend with your kids and get them off the television. But we're doing that in the context of having representatives from Crayola involved in that conversation. And in doing so, we're integrating that product information in an organic way, rather than just saying, you know what, here's Crayola's coupon. Go out, spend your money. Um, and I think that, that message goes ex extremely farther than you know, handing out just your giveaway or your coupon. Other ways that you can engage mom bloggers? through contests and giveaways. Uh, this is something that happens fairly frequently within the mom blog community. Um, you can stage a contest that says, for everyone who leaves a comment on this post today, I will give you $100 uh, worth of my clothing. Um, if you want more chances to win, you can fan me on Facebook. You can follow me on Twitter. Um, and again, what you're doing is you're getting your messaging out and you're getting people to recognize your brand, to recognize your logo. You can stage what's known as interactive campaigns. In a nutshell, that's basically the compilation of sponsored posts, Twitter parties, contests, and giveaways. And what you're doing is coming to the social media 
uh, playground, for lack of a better word, with every tool in your arsenal. You have posts. You're talking about the brand on Twitter. You're interacting on Facebook. You're, again, you're telling your story. The next two ideas um, are, are somewhat newer. Um, brand ambassador programs are something that a lot of companies are using today. You can see on the slide a host of different companies that I've pulled together. Um, Graco Nation uh, is one of them. That was a group of moms who came together to talk about their strollers. Uh, Lifetime Television, Office Max, Disney, Purex, um, Pepperidge Farms did a program called Fishful Thinking. Uh, what that was is a group of moms that they brought together and using their brand and their logo, they talked about how to be positive with your kids ages seven and older. You know, your kids are getting to a point in life where, gosh, it's getting a little hard, they're questioning your authority, they're not so likely to listen to you anymore. How do you overcome those obstacles? Well, you do that with fishful thinking. Um, Walmart was actually the pioneer in this area. Uh, they started a group several years back that they called the Walmart 11 Moms. And this was basically a group of bloggers who focused on couponing and frugal living, how to save money for your family, and brought them together in a group. And what Walmart did is they sent their products to these bloggers, who in turn you know, wrote about their experience. Um, offered coupons to their readers, engaged, engaged, engaged. And because it was women and brands partnering for the first time, it got a lot of attention within the mom blogging community. It was something very exciting. The last point about how to engage a mom blogger is through the idea of a nomination and award. Um, Nickelodeon, uh, which hopefully many of you have heard of. They have a fairly large um, television presence. My kids, I know, are addicted to it. Um, in any event, they offer up an annual award program that, they, uh, that they've coined as Parents Picks. Um, it's, it's kind of you know, similar to any other product or category that you may nominate people for, the best blogger, the best stroller, um, the best place to go locally uh, to take your family out to eat, etc. cetera. Um, but what's brilliant about this idea is that it's, it's self-perpetuating. So me as a blogger, I want to get my name out there. Bloggers are interested in two things, traffic and compensation. And if you can offer them traffic as a reward for talking about your brand, you've got their attention. In this particular case, like I was saying, Using myself as an example, I'm a blogger. I want to get my name out there. I want people to read my site. I'm going to nominate myself as the best mom blogger in the, in the category. And if I get enough of my network to vote for me on Facebook, on Twitter, and talk about me, oh, wow, suddenly I'm a finalist. That's exciting. Um, I have some clout. And what's more, I have, and, and the, the voting continues. Um, I have the ability to, po to possibly be a winner. I can be the best new blogger of 2010. Um, and what's more, if I do win, they, Nickelodeon has even gone back and said, hey, winners, now you can blast your title out to your network. Let them know that you won. So th and then this is something that goes on for a month, two months, consistently talking about Nickelodeon, consistently talking about this, this messaging. So if I've sold you at all today on the idea of how to approach a mom blogger, or that you will want to approach a mom blogger, there are some do's and don'ts. Um, first off, an element of a successful pitch is to know your audience. Know that the blogger that you're approaching is, a, is the right fit for your brand. Um, if you are a clothing company, don't approach a food blogger. Not a good match. Um, if if you are a clothing company, approach a fashion blogger. Approach a flat fashion blogger who is who has a demographic that's similar to yours. You know, is she blogging towards twenty somethings, or is she looking at women like a baby boomer, a woman in her forties and fifties who's try, still trying to, you know, um, figure out makeup and then look at and look at clothing and things like that. Those are different demographics, and there needs to be a match. Um, be open and honest about your intentions upfront. I've had situations, uh, we were working with a company, gosh, as, as uh, recently as last fall, and I was very excited. They were a big photography company, and um, 
we thought, wow, perfect match. Our community partnering with a photography company, bloggers. That's a, that's a you know, fundamental part of blogging is, is posting your photos and, and showing off what it is you're doing in your daily life. Um, unfortunately, I learned several weeks after conversations and emails that they were actually interested in deep linking. So they really wanted to drive SEO based on specific keyword terms, which is fine. But you need to have told me that up front because as a blogger, I've spent time and energy coming up with a pitch and how I can help you reach my community. Um, if you don't want to use that, then you know that's just that's wasted time and effort. And get personal with the blogger. Know their first name. Know that they have a new baby or adolescent children. Um, know the name of their blog. That, little things like that go a long way to getting this person to continue to want to work with you. Offer something to the blogger in exchange for their work. Um, you pay your employees. Why not pay your blogger? <laughs> this person is going to be on the front lines talking about your brand daily. Make it worth their while. And I'm, I'm not saying you know, they're, they're uh, a, even a consultant or a contract employee, but make, make it, ensure that what they're saying is, is going to be in the best light and not because they're disgruntled or they feel like you don't value their worth. You can offer several things to a blogger in terms of obviously cash, um, an ad buy, offer to buy an ad, a graphic in their sidebar. Perhaps give them a sample product. Give them um, you know, the latest lunchbox that you're pushing and let, them, let, their, let their children use it. Um, another idea is to give them tickets to an event. Give them something local in their area that they can bring their family to. Finally, be open to suggestions. No one knows how to reach a mom blogger's audience better than that person. She knows who your consumers are because she's one of them. And so listen to her. You know, she may not be you know, have all the best ideas, but she does, she does come to the table with some. And you know, maybe through that conversation, you can find that middle ground and figure out how best to you know, execute your social media campaign. So for every successful pitch, there's also a failed one. And there are several ways that you know, a pitch can go awry. First off, it can be impersonal. Um, you probably don't open mail that says, dear resident. So email address, dear blogger, probably not going to be too successful. Um, these are also, you know, a lot of these are the opposite scenario of what I just described. Referencing the incorrect name, uh, their incorrect blog title, incorrect content. The third bullet is, is pretty important, uh, one that if you were to remember nothing else from my talk today, remember this. Uh, if you are asking a blogger to do a significant amount of work and invest a significant amount of time in terms of posting, interacting on her Twitter stream, posting about you on Facebook, don't offer her the chance to win something. This is not the lottery. <laughs> Finally, um, offering to supply content Obviously, you want to influence the message that she is putting out there, but don't write the pitch for her. Um, we have been in situations oftentimes where we have partnered successfully with companies um, and given them draft posts, which they review, edit, and approve. That's fine. I think that's, that's completely reasonable. Writing a post for me, probably not going to work. First off, it's not in my voice. It doesn't sound like me. My readers will know that. And because of that, Actually, what I should say is, I come to the table with a commodity. And that is, my readers place their trust in me. If I recommend a product, it's because they believe I believe in it. If I start recommending things that willy-nilly, you know, wow, this is the latest Wii, and I've never played Wii, as shocking as that may sound, I, I won't be able to pull that off. And chances are, I've said something to that effect on Twitter at some point or another. I've joked about it. Saying, ah, gosh, what are, what are these video games these kids are playing these days? Um, when you offer to supply content, you invalidate the message. And, and, and that, that it's, it's just not a good match. Um, and your, your, message, your branding won't go as far. Finally, um, providing no incentive is, is something we touched upon earlier. You want to make it worth the blogger's while. Here's an example of an email gone wrong. Yeah. My name is Francesca, not Francine. 
I love your blog. I have an idea for a guest post. This is a made company. It's the perfect solution for moms with busy summer schedules. Let me know if you're interested. I can send you high resolution photos um, from the sign the PR girl. There are a couple elements, you know, personally that I, I think people could improve upon in this email uh, from this particular PR firm. Um, blogging is a business. Happy faces, kind of cutesy, you know, treat it as a business. Um, you don't know me, I don't know you. Maybe your first interaction with me should be on the up and up, should have an, an element of formality to it. Um, it's the perfect solution with moms with busy summer schedules. Mm, you don't really know me. Let's get to know each other first before you start offering to send me content and, and you know, offering me the perfect solutions to my life. Uh, and finally, you know, the I, I love your blog. Uh, well, you can do more to personify the message. Now this is my, this is my little risky photo uh, slide after Justin talked about not measuring ROI. I don't know where he is, but um, I, I was going to talk a little bit about how you can measure ROI. Uh, from a mom blogger perspective, I, I think Justin made some very, very valuable points. Um, from a mom blogger perspective, I think you, you can measure engagement. Um, this can happen in multiple ways. You can track clicks on URLs. You know, tra if, if someone is posting um, about your company, and you want to know how many of their users are actually going to your site, you can measure that, you can monitor that. Uh, we do that very often. We um, executed a campaign for Procter & Gamble, actually it's happening right now, for um, Vicks Vapor Rub. And they want to know how many of our users were driving to their sites. We monitor all of that. At the end of the campaign, we present them with a report. This is how many clicks you had. This is when they happened. Um, you know, we can even show them most likely why they happen. This is the messaging that we were delivering that worked ex exceptionally well. Mm, this is what didn't work so well. So what's interesting about working with a mom blogger, or there are some lessons learned that you can take forward, even if you choose not to work with that woman again, that you can take forward to future campaigns. You can monitor conversations involving your brand on Twitter and Facebook. You can do that via hashtag, it's the pound symbol. Um, this can work in your favor in an amazing way, and it, it can also be somewhat detrimental. Uh, there was a case several years ago with um, Motrin, and it was uh, a commercial targeted at moms, um, specifically moms who wear their kids in uh, carriers. You know, you know, everyone see maybe like a Bjorn or an Ergo or something like that. And the commercial went something like this. So are you a mom and you're crying about the pain that you're in? <laughs> then go out and do something about it um, by Motrin. That was a very high level <laughs> summary of the commercial. In any event, many women took, took offense to that. I'm not crying about carrying my baby. That's something I want to do. We were very passionate about their children. What happened was, in turn, women got on Twitter and talked about pound Motrin fail. You don't want your brand associated with the word fail. <laughs> So there are ways to monitor that conversation. You can offer a promotional code. Every time a user uh, checks out of your shopping basket and they use a specific code, that's trackable. Um, you can ask for site statistics or impressions at the end of a campaign, during a campaign. You know, maybe even look at it, what, their, what were their impressions prior to a campaign. A lot of times bloggers are very interested in working with brands simply because it drives traffic to their site. Hey, I'm working with you know, Graco, I'm working with Disney. Wow, how'd you get that? I want to go read about that. Um, so as a, as, a, as a business, you bring value to a blogger. It, it is a two-way street. Um, and then you can also finally observe the impact of your brand's followers or subscribers on your, own, on your own accounts. You know, was I able to increase your Facebook following by 500? That's significant. Did you go up a thousand followers on Twitter? Again, that's significant. That's a measure, something that you can easily track before and after a campaign. Sorry. Okay. The next part of my presentation, we're going to be talking about a few case studies. Who are bloggers that are actually doing this, and who are these companies who are getting involved? This is actually a mom blogger who is out of the San Francisco Bay Area. Her name is Maggie. She writes for a site called Mighty Girl. She's been around a long time. Um, she's not necessarily a Reed Drummond, a pioneer woman, or a deuce, but she is well known within our community. 
Maggie came up with an idea uh, for a post. She called it 100 things that I want to do before I go. It was her bucket list. It ranged from I want to try a new food to I want to go to the black and white ball in San Francisco to I want to go to Dubai. Um, because she published it on her blog, she called it her Mighty Life, life List. What's interesting about this case is that as Maggie's message was shared within the blogging community, companies took note. Companies like Intel and Verizon actually took items off of Maggie's life list and sponsored her. They sponsored her to go to, I, I think one of her items was Greece. I haven't had that experience yet. I hope to someday. <laughs> However, the point of this case study is that as, my, as Maggie published her Mighty Girl list, and the information was shared, other people within the community started doing the same thing. They started talking about Verizon and Intel in an organic way. Wow, Maggie got sponsored. It wasn't from the perspective of how can I get sponsored, but it was from the perspective of thinking about your life in a different way. What do you want to do before you go? What, what's on your to-do list? Are you realizing your full potential? That's a powerful message. And it gets back to the concept of storytelling and what mom bloggers do for a living. Another case study is something that I was uh, actually personally involved in. This is a movie that was released last year, starred Uma Thurman. It was not that good, <laughs> which I didn't know. <laughs> so that was a lesson learned on my part. In any event, the movie was called Motherhood, and it was about mom bloggers. It was about how Eliza Welch, who was played by Uma Thurman, managed all of her different roles in life, that of a mother, that of a friend, that of a, a chauffeur. Um, I, I think I have some other titles up here on the slide. And the group I was working with at the time, we were known as Moxie Media. We were a group of 30 women bloggers. We were made aware that this movie was going to be released and actually figured out what company uh, back in New York is uh, pitching the the. Which, which PR company was responsible for um, pitch, you know, advertising is the word I'm looking for, advertising for the, for the movie. Um, and so what we did is we put together a pitch for the PR company. Our goal was simple. It was to build awareness and excitement for the film within the mom blogging community. It seemed like a natural fit. We're mom bloggers. We're going to promote a movie about mom blogging. We came up with a three-tiered approach. And essentially, at a basic level, our idea was to bring Eliza to life, take her out of the movie, and make her a character in, within social media. It was a three-week program. The first week, we brought Eliza's blog online. We wrote posts for her. She went out and commented on other blogs. She started interacting. The next week, she got on Twitter. Um, by this point, you know, we had created somewhat of a buzz. So there were people talking about Eliza. Who is she? Let's go follow her on Twitter. Finally, the last week was the week before the movie, so we were offering movie passes. We were figuring out uh, geographic areas where women could get together and watch the movie in person, movie nights with your friends. Um, and what's interesting about this idea is this was a case where we as women went to, your, to a company, could have been your company. We wanted to be a part of what you were doing because we were excited about it. And I think when you can get a mom blogger to come to you and say, I want to help you promote, that's a powerful thing. You've done a very good job. <laughs> so we reached the end of my uh, presentation. And what I'd like for you to take away today is that social media has become a vital component of a brand's marketing mix. And blogs are a core component of that. Um, they're a go-to source for information, advice, and recommend, recommendations for women online. In addition, given women's ability to engage communities and initiate brand conversations, they're a worthwhile investment. Women are having conversations that are specific, that are targeted, and that are personal. And they could be talking about you. So take note. Thank you. <laughs>